here we are. This is good. You know, I'm not a gambling person, but I bet God loves a full house. <laughs> I think there's something special about this. Did you know parking was still had trouble parking? Did I have trouble parking out there? That's a good problem to have, good isn't problem it? To have, good yeah. problem. Really good problem. It's a, it's amazing how uh, I mean, how long has it been since we've known each other? We've known each other for a long, quite some time now, about a yeah. few years. Yeah, about eight years. That long eight years? Yeah. Wow. You're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's a. Uh, you know, one of the things that you guys don't know about us, you know, uh, for, for many of you, the, the challenge of coming together is we understand it. You know, trans yes. transition change is difficult and, um, you know, the linking of hearts and minds and um, it's challenging. But one thing that has always been true that you need to know about this man and me is when we met, we linked. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you how that happened. Well, I was driving around the neighborhood. My, we had just moved into the neighborhood and my son, Canaan, who's here, goes horizon. So I thought I'd drop by and, and say hello. And when I met him, he says, you know, my name is Billy. He said, my name is Gene. I said, Billy Gene. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He actually he did a break dance right then. I was like, I like this guy. <laughs> you know, you think that I'm the athlete up here, but I'm this guy, marathon this year, just what, Friday. from rim to rim Friday. in the Grand Canyon, from rim to rim, that's 20 hours or so. I just want to tell you something. Ow. <laughs> that was amazing. No, um, I, uh, you know, the joy of us coming together, you know, uh, even before I had the dream, you know, the Lord was, had linked us in such a beautiful way. And, and the, the context of our sharing our lives together and seeing what God was doing was already something that we enjoyed doing, whether it be men's retreats or connecting together. And, you know, the beauty of how God moves us is something special. And sometimes, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know, there's something in the scripture where the angels would show up, God was about to do something, and the, and the angel would always go like this, fear not. And the reason that, 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 that they would say fear not is because sometimes when the Lord starts to do something, we just jump into fear. Like, there's, there's something about us like, uh, 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 uh. And so, it's just, just a reminder for me as we began to enter into this, and really for everyone here to say, I realize that the Lord is saying to us, fear not, I got you covered. And uh, I just want to say, I love... From Faith Rising, your pastor is my friend, and not just my friend, my partner in ministry. And to do this today and to join together today as an organization is so symbiotic to me and just the beauty of the kingdom of God. And it's a privilege to have you join our staff, to be a part of the vision that we have of moving forward and reaching our city for Jesus. And I looked out, yes, yes, I saw how many of Faith Rising was here, and I'm, I'm so honored. Uh, we were talking last week, and I said that traditionally only... About 50% of a church will transition to follow a pastor. And I am so grateful that the right 50%. That's funny. Well, I'm privileged. Today's, today's the beginning of a new journey. And, uh, you know, we're linked together in partnership. And we here at Oasis, we just do things together, right? Um, no, one's, no one's king around here. Jesus is king. And uh, Amen. Amen. the beauty of that is because he's king, we just all want to honor him together and to serve together as leaders and as pastors and to see, figure out how to make it happen well and to encourage you and to enrich you to become all that you want to be. That's what we want. And we're joining, linking arms together in partnership with our team and your team. And we're just going to now be the team, right? This is the team. And uh, there's no more us and them. It's 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 us. We're doing it together. We're, this is this is the Lord's story He's telling, and we're privileged to be a part of His story. It'll be history one day when we look back and see the grandeur of God. But it's the story that He's telling now, and the beauty that we have to follow and honor God and see what the Lord is going to do. Amen. I'm gonna pray over you, and I'm gonna let you preach. You ready? ready. I know you're ready. ready. But you join together with me, Father. I thank you for Gene. I thank you, Lord, as we embrace Him as Lord part of our pastoral team, just the Lord, the strength of, of honor and, and, and wisdom that he brings, Lord, and the just the maturity in Christ, Lord, and just the blessing he is in his personhood. Um, Lord, through all, all his experience, Lord, through the uh, joy of what he's learned in life, we thank you that we get the privilege of that in this organization now. And we just pray as we receive him on our team and as we release him now to be a part of this ministry um, expression of your glory to your people, I pray that you bless him today. And from this day forward, we just... Uh, 
receive him in this fellowship and to this one beauty, the story that you're telling. And we just ask for your blessings upon the Holy Spirit. Come, be with us in these moments as we open up our hearts to your word, as he brings the word to um, our lives. We just uh, receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Let's bring it. Let's bring it. If you take a moment to pray with me, Father, almighty and everlasting, we bless you, we praise you, we, we give you all the glory that you so deserve. You are our strength, our salvation, our rock, our burden bearer, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom. We love you. You're worthy of our praise. We lift your name on high. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough. Use me mightily now. Let this word be a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our paths. And we give you always the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen. amen, amen. The scripture says, and now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, henceforth and forever. He's in this place. Our God is in this place. I'm going to go right to it. I'm going to pick up on John chapter number 13, verse number 34 and 35. But before we go to the scripture, some of you read my bio, and you, you know I'm from the South, South Phoenix. And uh, <laughs> I grew up in a little small town called Kingwood, Louisiana. A little small town. We were poor. But as poor as we were, we grew up in a two-story house. Mama had her story. Daddy had his story. But what I remember, what I remember is the love that was poured out to me in our community, the school, the teachers. And I'd go to church, and there's a little small church, and the church mothers would come over. They'd see you. they say, come here, boy. I was about six years old, and, and they would put their hands on you. And they'd start rocking, and they began to pray and prophesy. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, use this little boy mightily, Lord. I know you can. I know you're able. Don't let him go, Lord. Hold on to him because he's your child. Lord Jesus. And I'm holding on. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, there's an African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. As I look out and see this village that God is raising up, isn't God wonderful? This village, this oasis of love with, where he blends cultures and families and churches and people. And God is not done with us yet. He's not done with us yet. So let's pick up at John 13, verse 34 and verse 35. I want you to read it with me. If you, yes, read it with me. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Loving people like Jesus loved us is not difficult. It's impossible without having the love of Jesus in our hearts. You can't love like Jesus apart from Jesus. I'm not sure if you're like me. My love goes until about 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Thank you. <laughs> and then it opens up again around, 10, 8, 10, around, around 7 a.m. But what Jesus talked about is this abiding love. That if you abide in me, he says, and I in you, that you will bear not fruit but much fruit. 
And his desire is that each one of us bears much fruit, that fruit of love. In fact, Jesus saw a fig tree once that was in full bloom, but there was no figs, and Jesus was hungry. And the scripture says he cursed that tree because it was barren. Jesus desires for each one of us to produce this abiding love, the love that only comes from Jesus. He saw that fig tree, and he saw the tree was worthy and should be producing fruit, but it did not produce fruit. I'm not sure about you, but one thing that discourages me is fruitless Christians. All root, but no fruit. And they're the first ones that when you meet them would say to you, I'm a Christian. And whenever someone tells you I'm a Christian, I brace myself. I'm not sure about you. <laughs> There's no reason why we should have to declare that we are Christian. Jesus says they would know you by your fruits. When I first met John, John didn't have to say, hi, I'm John, and I work out. <laughs> I can see the fruit. And Justin, I'm not sure if Justin's out here. Justin's about 5'6". About That's how wide he is. He, I'm not sure how tall he is. He didn't have to tell me he worked out. I, I knew it, the fruit. When we look around and Jesus looks at us, do we have enough fruit that's evident that someone can call you a child of God? Because by that fruit, Jesus said that they would know you. By that fruit. For those of you that have fruit trees in your yard, in your house, raise your hand if you have fruit trees around. That's a lot of them. I know where I can get fruit now. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know if it's an uh, orange tree or a grapefruit tree or a lemon tree if it's just foliage. But as soon as the fruit appears, now I know, I recognize it, that's a lemon tree. That's an orange tree. It's the fruit that allows me to identify it. And for those who have those trees, you know that some seasons, you have what's called a bumper crop, which means it's more than enough. We have so much fruit that you've juiced as much as you can juice, and you've made everything you can make with fruit, but you still have more fruit coming. It's like you have this endless supply. Now you're giving it to your family, your coworkers, your neighbors. You're dropping it off at church. You're taking it to the kids' school. But the fruit just keeps coming. And so what do you do? You start, you take it to the street. You say, free fruit, please. And that's what Jesus is saying, that when we abide in him and he abides in us, he becomes our supply of love. And then our love is not just a love for family and friends. We begin to love our church and our neighbors. We love our coworkers. We love people at our school. We, and then the love just keeps flowing. Then we take the love to the street. We start loving the unlovable, loving those that you don't even know. Why? Because Jesus is your supply. And we're loving like Jesus loves us. For God so loved you and I, he, he gave. He gave. He loved us not because we were right, not because we had it all together. He loved us in whatever state we were in. He said, Father, forgive them. Jesus said, whosoever. We didn't have to qualify. Just be a whosoever. Jesus love for whoever would receive him. I want you to think back to the first time that you fell in love. Fell in love. So if you've been married, let me see, if you've been married 10 years or longer, raise your hand. If you've been married at least 10 years or longer. Oh, that's good. Keep them raised. Keep them raised. 20 years or longer, keep it raised. And we're talking about the one person. So if you're married, not, not tolling. No. Not tallying. You know, two care to one. Okay. 30 years or longer. Awesome. 40 years or longer. <laughs> 50 years or longer. Is anybody... Was it? 50 years. Awesome. Is, is that 60? Do I hear 60? 60, 51 ones, 51 ones. 60. No. How many? Oh. What's that? 53. 63. Wow, 63. And was that another one? 63 years. That's amazing. We have a couple in our church 
Earl and Lois Hoard, they're in their 90s now. And they've been married over 70 years. Yeah, I went 70 plus years. I asked her, I said, you ever, you ever thought about divorce? She says, she says, murder. <laughs> but he's still here. I mean, last time I checked, he was still here. Kim was with me. We've been, we're going to celebrate 33 years, at the end of, 33 years at the end of the month. 33 years, yes. 33 years. And when we got married, you know, the first year, the first year is called puppy love, right? That's what puppy love, where it's like, no, I love you, no, I love you, no, you, no, 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 you, you, you. After 33 years, it's no longer puppy love, it's full grown dog love. It's, <laughs> it's, another, it's another place. This kind of love that Jesus is talking about, this agape love goes beyond your emotions. This agape love, this is not the kind of love that you can get from watching. YouTube videos, uh, reading your favorite romance novel. In Ephesians chapter number 3, verse 17, verse 18, it's so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the holy people, the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. God's love is so high. You can't get over it. You remember that? So deep, you can't get under it. So what? So wise, you can't get around it. Oh, wonderful love. You know, the world loves differently than we love. The world loves things. I'm not sure which iPhone is out right now, uh, the latest one that's out, but let's say if I found iPhone 49 and, and the 50 just came out. Oh, okay. Oh, this old thing. Now you got to have the 50. That's the world. The world wants what's next and the latest and the newest. And the truth is, they haven't learned how to work the 49, but they got to have the 50 because it's new. And the promise of something that is better. But we know that Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, right? The same God. And, and the love that he keeps pouring into us, the more we love, the more love he pours back to us. The world loves things and uses people. Jesus says, no, I want you to use things and love one another. That's the love that Jesus wants us to do. It's not about putting things ahead of people. Jesus said, love, love, love. The greatest commandment he says, I want you to do is love, love everyone. And the authority of love is in three ways. Number one, love guides. The thought, love guides. Whenever you're in, in a point where you need to know what direction to go, ask love to give you the direction. Those who know Proverbs chapter, I'm not even going to put this on the screen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and verse number 7. And we know this one. Trust in the. With what? Let's say it together. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's start again. <laughs> Whatever translation you know, just use your translation. So, again, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Give God a round of applause. That was good, guys. I love that. I love that little participation thing. And God said, if you just trust me, he says, I'll direct your paths. If you're in a point where you're not sure where to go, God will give you direction. He was our guide. Whenever you've struggled, if you would just trust God, he will guide us. In Psalm 23, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he goes on to say, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. God guides. Wherever you go, whatever, whatever you are, guide, God guides and God provides. If God gives you a vision, he's already given you the provision. Just follow him. Trust him. God guides. The next thing is love teaches. Love guides and love teaches. I was once at a park and I saw 
some boys out there, and they were percussionists. They were about 12 or 13. They were percussionists, and they were, they were playing, now, not drums. It was like pots and pans and an old bucket. You ever seen kids do that? And they were playing with such passion and such precision. I'm watching them, and I'm just, I'm just amazed. You don't get there without really loving. And I can imagine when they first started playing, their parents was like, cut that noise out. But they kept loving it. And they kept playing, and and they got into a deeper love. And as you fall in love with what you're doing, love soon takes over. And love becomes your teacher. And they began to go into a new level of expression because love was God in the way. And what I was watching was the expression of love. You don't get that far without loving. The same way as parents, love will guide you. Love will teach you how to be a better parent, a better father, a better mother, a better husband, a better wife, a better child of God. Love is the way. Love is the only way. And if we will follow that direction of of love, it will not lead us astray. Just follow the pathway of love. Love guides, love teaches, and last is love works. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 1, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Love works. If you tried everything else, try loving a little bit more. Love a little bit deeper. Don't ever give up on love. Sometimes we love up to a limit and we stop, but love Love keeps going. Just keep going. I saw a guy once had a T-shirt that says, free hugs. And then I saw this line begin to form. I said, how can this be? People were desperate. I'm a, a line forming. I'm like, you don't even know this. This is the mall. You know who hangs out at the mall? He could be anybody. But they were desperate for love. And they were there, and I'm thinking, how? You know, I got in line. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is that love works. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, just keep applying the principle of love. Outside my office once, two guys that I know were about to go to blows over somebody that he took my girlfriend and she supposed to be with me, and they were about to go into blows. I said, I said to one guy who was carrying it, I said, come in here. And he came into my office, and he was like, all oh, huffing and puffing. And I put my arms out, and he started to weep, and he fell into my arms. What I'm saying to you is love works. You just got to give love a chance. If you could decrease more and allow love to increase, you see that love gives you extreme possibilities. Love has gifts in you that you have not even opened yet. Let love show you a better way. Show you the way that you've never seen before. A new you is waiting on the other side of the love that God wants to impart to you. Let love come. Give love a chance. James chapter 4, I'm going to share with this, verse 17 says, He who knows the good they ought to do and does not do it, to them it is sin. So we're going to love people as Jesus loved us. Greed takes, it is never satisfied. Love gives and has plenty left over. There's a song that the late Tina Turner recorded called What's Love? You never, you never heard that song. You never heard that song. That was a, that's not a hymn book. That's not a, that's not a hymnal. <laughs> What's love got to do? Got to do. What's love but a... I'm going to pray for y'all. Did, that... <laughs> Did you hear that? I threw the bait out, and they didn't wait for it to hit the water. They just jumped up and got the bait. I've got the answer to that. What's love got to do with it? Everything. Right? everything. So I ask you, what's love got to do with it? Everything. Just keep giving love a chance. Love never fails. It says in scripture also in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through verse 39, 
It says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, you can't make someone love you. Try that. Got the T-shirt. You can't make, the best you can do is love yourself. Love yourself to the greatest of your ability. Know that God loves you. If Jesus had a refrigerator, your picture would be on his refrigerator. (laughs) He loves you. You were created in the image and likeness of God. When you look in the mirror, you're looking into the face of perfection. When God made you, God said, that's good. That's very good. You don't need anyone else to approve you. Know that God has already approved you. You're qualified, certified, appointed, and anointed with the love of Jesus. That's it. You are the perfection of God. He loves you that much. God loves you. Don't ever stop loving yourself. You know, Kim's a quilter, and she makes amazing quilts. And when Kim was starting out many years ago, she was making baby quilts. And whenever someone would have a baby, Kim would give them a quilt. Except now these babies are full-grown men. And whenever they see her, they say, Miss Kim, I still got my quilt. (laughs) And what they're saying is the same quilt that kept them warm when they were babies and now keeping their babies warm. We're talking about a generation of love. This is a a, a union that's starting today, but generations are going to come from this union. And this love will go for generations. And Jesus says, if you will love me, if you will keep my commandments, I will bless you for generations and generations. And the foundation of all of that is love. If you just love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, God will do the rest. Let God do the heavy lifting. Let God, just trust that God will do what we are unable and unwilling to do. Give love a chance. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, dear children, let us love. Let us love with words and speech. Not just words and speech, but with actions and in truth. Love requires an action and a choice. Some Christians I meet won't give. They say, you know, when I see people on the street, that says, I don't give. I don't give to people on the street because, you know, they, they may be strung out. They may go and buy booze. They may have issues. I, don't, I just don't give. That's, that's not what I do. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God looked beyond our faults. Aren't you glad that even though you are out there, may have been wretched, that he looked beyond that? That God so loved you and I, he gave us this only son. And Jesus, the scripture says that while we were yet sinners, we weren't right while we still were out there. Jesus on that cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We're no better than the people that we're judging. What makes them unworthy of the little change that we've got when God's trying to give us the change that we so deserve? If we would give that change, God can give us our change. What we loose on earth, God looses in heaven. It begins with us. If you have a love about you, that love that gives, empty hands that give do not stay empty for long. If you just trust God, God will fill that void that you've got. That void sometimes can only be filled when you release love. When you let the love flow, God begins to fill. They say when praises go up. What happens? Blessings Blessings come down. And we praise God with people that we don't know. We praise God on the highways and byways. How can you love me? We just met. I love you with the love of Jesus. Yes, yes. But you've got so much love. It's not my love. My love is good till about 930. I'm telling you, 10 o'clock. But the love of Jesus just keeps pouring and keeps pouring. and, And the more you give, the more he gives to you. That's just amazing and abundant love. We all have people that I know that are difficult to love. I know you have, have friends, uh, 
family members that are difficult to love. If you don't have anybody like that, it may be you. <laughs> but we, you know, you have people that's a challenge to love. Right? Don't point to anyone. No, just, this is a rhetorical question. Yes, Pastor. But we got people like that. Make a note of this. Light shines brightest in dark places. Sometimes God will place you in a position. You say, God, it's so dark here. God says, let your light shine. But God, I don't want to be here. God said, I placed you there because light is needed right where you are. That place where you're working right now. God, take me away. God says, no, you're in the right place at the right time. I placed you there for such a time as this. Let your light shine. My mother had this song a long time ago. She said, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere you go, let your light shine. It may be the darkest place. I don't want to be here, but let it shine. In your neighborhood, I just, I want to move. Let it shine. People that don't like you, let it shine, especially on people that don't like you. Friends that come and tell me, I don't think the people that work like me. So why is that? Because the stuff they say. Like what? Like, I don't like you. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the sheltered shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. Amazing grace. We sung it earlier. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost. Did anybody say that? I once was lost, but what? But now we're found. I was blind. But now we see that's God's amazing love. And what we're doing is we're just beggars telling other beggars where they can find bread. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Is that right? That's all we are. Not perfect. I'm far from it. I'm just forgiven. I'm just forgiven. The same love that that God forgave me, that same love we forgive others of all their trespasses, of all their issues, of all their shortcomings, we just forgive them. Just think the same way that we've been forgiven, the same way that we've been loved. Jesus is saying, this is the love. By this kind of love, they know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. First John 4 and 20. Whoever claims to love God but hates his brother is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom you have not seen. We all love differently. Everybody's different. Keep loving. Keep loving. In First Corinthians chapter 13, it's called the love chapter. And I love, I love this chapter. We talk about love being kind and patient. It seeks no record of wrong. It does not keep records. It endures all things. It trusts all things. Love believes all things. And then in First John, uh, John chapter, I mean in Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse number eight. Number eight. I love this one. Say it with me. Love. Never fails. We may fail. We may fail to stop loving, but love just, it never fails. I grew up in the country, and, and they used to have a pump. Anybody ever had to have a primer pump, a pump? Yeah, a couple of us. For those who don't know, you see those pumps in movies, they don't, you don't just go out there like you would normally just turn on the faucet and start pumping. You have to prime this pump. That means you got to bring water to get water. So what you do is you bring a your water out there, and you start pouring, and you start pumping. 
And then you keep going. You pour more and you start pumping. And you keep pouring and you start pumping. And soon there's a vacuum that happens and the water starts flowing. But you had to put in what you wanted to get out. And that's the same thing with love. Keep loving the unlovable. But, but, but they just, just keep loving. You can't take that one gallon of water and pour it in and pump and say, it doesn't work. You keep pumping. It says in Scripture, with joy we draw water from the well of salvation. As you keep pouring in, keep loving, keep applying love. Love is a fruit. It's a seed. And when you sow that seed of love into someone's life, you may not see it at the moment, but soon love began to sprout in them. It's because of you. It's because of the love that you've shown to them. You took the time to love somebody that was unlovable. I was that way. Once I was, a, I was an obnoxious kid at one point. Oh, yes, I was. I was. <laughs> no friends. And, and I would tell people, say, you know, I don't think this person likes me. And the person I'm talking to is saying, I don't like you either. It's easy to complain to people. You know, 80% of the people that you complain to don't care. <laughs> and the other 20% glad it's you and not them. So what is complaining good for us? Absolutely nothing. So we love, we love, we love like Jesus loved. And let's go with how we do it. How do we do it? How do we close? Love like Jesus loves us. First one, we love when it's not convenient. Love when it's not convenient. You can't give what you've never received. When you learn, it's because love has been poured into you. And it's inconvenient sometimes. When, when, when someone calls you late at night and they need something, and you're like, do you know what time it is? Love shuts off at 10. <laughs> but they need something now, and you've got you to show this love of Jesus. Or someone says, my car broke down. Can you, can you take me to work this week? That means you got to get up an hour earlier to take them. That's love. I'm saying it's inconvenient. Now think about how inconvenient it was for Jesus. We love because until it's inconvenient. We also love until it hurts. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, I'm going to just share with you this scripture. It says, we, we know love by this, that he, meaning Jesus, laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. It wasn't nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was love. He could have called on legions of angels to bring him down. But look beyond his suffering. And you know who he saw? He saw you. He saw me. So he endured that all the way to the cross. Jesus loved all the way to death. For those that work out know that you work out. You know, there's a saying, no pain, no what? No gain. That means you work out until you feel something, until it burns. Love until it burns. Love until you feel it. Don't, don't just stop loving. I lo this is the third day. How much love am I supposed to give? Just keep loving. There's no limit on love. Don't ever throw in the towel when it comes to love. Just keep loving. God will take care of the rest. So we love until it hurts, and then we, we love others above self. We love them above self. Doing for others more than what is required and loving them beyond what is allowed. You see, when you love beyond, it leaves space for God to move. When you go beyond what's usual and customary, beyond what people think that you should do, that's where God starts stepping in. Love, but add a little bit more to it. I didn't marry you because you were available. I didn't marry you because I wanted a family or a wife or a husband. I married you because of love. Love brings people together. When two people come together, the marriage is not what makes you happy. Marriage makes you holy. It allows God to join you in a union wherever two or more come together. Rightly divided in the world of truth, Jesus says, I'm there with you. He says, I can't wait. Jesus was saying, I can't wait until Sunday. He couldn't wait to show up. He couldn't wait. 
for faith and oasis. And all of God's people to come together. And he's in this place. But we also have an unwanted and uninvited guest. The evil one is here also. He wants to undo everything that God is doing. You'll leave here. Now, usually Satan waits in the car for you. But this time, you want to come. He wants to come in and see this for himself. And he's going to spread lies. You know, that's, that's something that Pastor Billy is trying to do. What's he trying to do? What's Pastor Gene up to? This is not Pastor Billy's doing or Pastor Gene's doing. It's the Lord's doing. It's the Lord. Go ahead. It's the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in his eyes as we're here. I want you to know that we passed this way but once. We don't get to do this again. We passed this way but once. So if you can make a difference, if you can help somebody, if you can ease some suffering, do it now. We don't get a second chance. I mentioned my son, Canaan. Where are you, Canaan? Canaan? There's Canaan over here. My youngest son. He's 20 now. I was looking at pictures of him recently. He was just... I have a picture of me holding him up like Simba. Nah, <laughs> Where's the time gone? You remember just, you were just 20 or 30? You just turned 40? I, not too long ago I was 40. I blinked and I was 50. Took a nap one time and I woke up I was 60. Now I just keep my eyes open. I just. <laughs> Tomorrow's not promised to anybody. If you're going to love somebody, love them today. There are people that you've not met before. Get to know somebody you haven't met before. Love on somebody you haven't met before. I'm going to tell you about faith rising people. Just a, just a hint. They're hugging people. Um, just so you know, they're hugging people. So if you see somebody coming at you, it's a faith, oh, that's a faith rising person right there. <laughs> now, if you're not a hugger, here's a universal sign for no hug. It's like, <laughs> I learned that at a church I went to, sadly. I went to hug somebody at church, and they went, hi. I said, oh, okay. Get used to hugging each other and loving each other. Let the love of God permeate. Let's make Satan so mad. Just love everybody. He hates it already that you showed up here today. We're just going to love him. We're just going to love each other, love each other. This kind of love that Jesus talks about, as I share again, is not difficult. It's impossible. That's why we need the love of Jesus. With every head bowed, every eye closed, just for a moment, I want you to make this declaration with me. I want everyone just to repeat after me. Say, God loves me. I'm blessed and highly favored. I walk in the footsteps of Jesus. I'm chosen by God to be his vessel of love, to love God, to love life, and to love people. I make this declaration in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a round of praise. Woo! Stand to your feet. There may be somebody here who does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We just had a wonderful time together, and it's not we're not done yet. We're going to have a time to fellowship together and get to know each other even more, but I'm praying for someone right now who do not know, you don't know this love that we're talking about. And I'm going to give you an invitation to receive him right now. If you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you died for me. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. I confess my sins. And by this confession, I'm saved. I make Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior. As you may be here, you're a backslider. You may have already accepted Jesus Christ, but you may have lost direction. I'm going to give you an opportunity to recommit your life right now. If you already accepted Jesus Christ, you need to recommit. Say, thank you, Lord, for never leaving me. Thank you for always being there. That when I strayed, you stayed. Use me now. Mold me to what you would have me to be. Jesus Christ is now my Lord and my Savior. And I receive this in Jesus' name. And Father God, for everyone that have prayed the prayers, for everyone that is loving right now, for every heart that is joined, we ask now that your angels will come, fill the void, dry the tear-stained eyes, renew and restore Give them back what only you can give them. And Lord God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Give God a number round of praise. Amen. Reminding us and empowering us to this beautiful thing called love. Uh, as our habit at Oasis Community Church, we're going to dismiss you to go, but we have our, our prayer ministry team is going to make their way to the front. If you are going through a difficult time, every Sunday we do this, we pray for people, we're praying over people, whether it's something in your body, something in your mind, something in your family, just a challenge. We, we know that God answers prayers and we want to be here every week for you to come and bring those needs. So as I dismiss you to go to celebrate, that way is where all the good stuff is. Um, so I want to encourage you guys that are usually that way people, go that way. And love on some people, hug on some people, get to know somebody today that you don't know. Um, welcome, 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 welcome. Here we are, family together, sharing in the vision and purpose of God. I'm so excited about what God is going to do. Amen. So as my prayer ministry team leaders come up, you are dismissed to go. And if you need that prayer, please take time. Have a wonderful afternoon. Blessings to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us online. We hope that today's worship and message were inspiring to you. Here at Oasis, we want you to know God, grow healthy, discover your purpose, and make a difference. That being said, if you are new or want to be better connected to Oasis, you can text the word OASIS to the number on the screen. We would love to get you plugged in. And if you have any prayer requests, you can leave them in the comments below. We would love to continue praying for you during the week. As always, we will see you next Sunday. Be blessed.